Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Dusterberg, a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, and I'm delighted to be joined today by uh, two leaders of the uh, uh, House, uh, Representative Scott Fitzgerald and uh, Representative Greg Stanton. Uh, there's a lot of activity on the um, in the Congress these days, vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, China. Uh, the House just passed a uh, rather large and comprehensive uh, bill on competitiveness with China um, and are probably going to go to uh, conference with the Senate uh, in the near future to uh, iron out uh, a final bill. But uh, today we're going to discuss uh, a bill these two gentlemen have introduced and are pushing the uh, Foreign Merger Subsidy Disclosure Act, just to get it right, uh, which was uh, uh, introduced last year. And my understanding is that the language of this bill has been included in the Competes Act, which is the co comprehensive House version of the, of the China bill. Let me first uh, introduce our two uh, guests and let them talk a bit about what the bill does um, and how they anticipate um, the bill moving forward in the, in the next few weeks. Um, we're going to start with the uh, principal um, sponsor, Representative Scott Fitzgerald. He was elected to represent uh, Wisconsin's 5th Congressional District in 2020. Prior to his election to the U.S. Congress, uh, Representative Fitzgerald served in the Wisconsin State Senate uh, from 1995 to 2021. His distinguished tenure in the Senate included serving as majority leader, minority leader, co-chairman of the Joint Committee on Finance and chairman of the Senate Corrections Committee. Uh, in the House, uh, uh, Representative Fitzgerald serves on the uh, Committee on Judiciary, the Committee on Education and Labor, and the Committee on so Small Business. He's joined as a principal co-sponsor of this bill, a Representative Greg Stanton from uh, Arizona. Uh, Representative Stanton represents the 9th Congressional District in the growing state of uh, Arizona. He was first elected to the House of Representatives in 2018. From 2012 to 2018, he served as the mayor of Phoenix. He previously served for nine years on the city council and was also the deputy attorney general of Arizona. Um, so um, Representative Fitzgerald, I think we'll turn to you first. Could you explain what your bill does and why you think it was necessary uh, to uh, promote this legislation? Yeah, thank you very much for uh, having us today and, and helping us kind of get the word out on what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, like many ideas that emerge, I think, within Congress, uh, this is something that, that quite honestly, I kind of uh, came across in talking with staff, and you, you could call it maybe a, a loophole or uh, something that I was surprised had, had not been addressed. And that was a uh, you know, pretty simple idea that we realized that China, about 3% of their GDP was specifically being set aside to subsidize uh, many of these companies that uh, quite honestly are kind of doing business, uh, not only up against American private enterprises, but you know, this, it, it's a mix of international or global uh, companies that that are being directly affected by these subsidies. So we said, let's let's try and figure out a way of addressing this. And and uh, I believe that this bill does a good job. And Representative Stanton is is uh, you know kind of leading the charge on the other side of the aisle. And I think I think it's a true bipartisan uh, kind of bill that that's going to garner a lot of support. And and I think other members are going to be surprised that that this uh, is kind of the situation and, and that this, uh, this exists and has existed for some time. Okay, Representative Stanton, um, what was your motivation for getting involved in this uh, particular um, uh, initiative? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Tom, and the Hudson, in Hudson Institute for putting this event together. As uh, Congressman Fitzgerald said, they get the word out on this important bill that was added to uh, the Competes Act. And I want to say thanks to Congressman Fitzgerald, who's been leading the way on this one for a while, for asking me to be his partner on the Judiciary Committee to move forward with this very important bill, the Foreign Merger Subsidy Disclosure uh, Act. Look, we're in competition with uh, China. 
Uh, and the United States is fully prepared to win this great global economic challenge that we have with China. But we wanna make sure that that competition is done fairly, uh, that there's not an unfair uh, advantage and that there's full disclosure of information as it relates to our economic competition with, uh, with China. As Congressman Fitzgerald uh, just mentioned, I think a lot of people would be surprised that uh, as uh, the government of China is subsidizing industry both inside of China and doing investment outside of China, that there isn't full transparency, isn't full disclosure of that information. And as there's so much merger activity going on in the United States, it is very important for the regulators to know about which companies are subsidized and to what level because that's important for them to make the decision about supporting a merger, whether or not uh, the new merged company may be engaging in anti-competitive uh, behavior or have market forces other than tradi traditional capitalism moving forward in, in the marketplace. Uh, and so they may, as they make decisions about whether to support those mergers, that's incredibly important information for them uh, to have. We want the free flow of information. We want the free flow of capitalism but we want to make sure it's done for the appropriate capitalistic uh, purpose. That is the reason for this bill is to make sure that our antitrust regulators have full information as they're making these important decisions. Well, um, just, just to go into some of the details, since this is um, 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 uh, put together as an anti, uh, antitrust measure and it would be enforced by the antitrust agencies uh, in the Justice Department and the uh, Federal uh, Trade Administration. Um, um, there, there are two reasons, it seems to me, that we have become worried about uh, Chinese acquisition of, of US companies. One is the competitiveness um, uh, angle that both of you talked about. But the other seems to be um, acquis uh, the Chinese uh, tactics of acquiring sensitive technologies, uh, sensitive in the sense of both uh, affecting national security through dual use uh, technology or affecting um, um, uh, technologies of the future, such as leading edge semiconductors or commercial aviation, uh, jet engines and the like. Does your bill um, uh, allow the antitrust agencies to sort of uh, consider these other considerations, the national security and te technology leadership issues, as they consider um, uh, the information that, that uh, would be uh, become more transparent under your bill should it become law? Representative Fitzgerald, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. There? I mean, yeah. Let me just um, let me just uh, offer kind of a few more uh, specifics that I think makes the, the legislation important. And that is that the government subsidies, they're often used to acquire US assets. And, and I think this is what you were getting at, partic particularly those that, that do deal with not only the strategic um, and emerging technologies, but also things that have a direct effect on what I guess you could say industrial policy. So uh, yeah, not only is it being subsidized and then obviously the dollars of the subsidies that are being used are, are now being moved to garner US assets, but then the certain uh, particular parts of those assets are very sensitive and uh, are something that quite honestly should be protected. And I'll just say, you know, China's very active in the U.S. economy. It's not like you've got some, uh, you know, a, a, a country in Asia that wouldn't necessarily, you know, uh, try and uh, do this in an overt way. I mean, it's happening. It's happening right in front of our eyes. And I think that it, it's another reason that that this piece of legislation is is important. We can we have to be able to track the dollars and then ultimately see how they're being used. And, and that's what this bill does. Tom, you mentioned uh, specifically the semiconductor industry. That probably is example A as to why this legislation is so important. China has uh, massively subsidized the semiconductor industry. As you know, the United States over many decades, sadly has lost our global leadership position in the manufacturing of uh, uh, semiconductors. I happen to, in my district is 
Intel, uh, one of the, 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 their major manufacturing entity is, is in Chandler in, um, uh, in Arizona. And so they are, we've lost so much position on that. We want to regain that, uh, regain that position. And it's important that regulators have that information as they make decisions. Um, we don't, on issues of supply chain, that's a national security uh, issue. Uh, the United States losing our global position on semiconductors, also a national security issue. So yes, uh, the regulators should have this information and should be able to consider national security implications as they make important decisions about um, uh, emerging, uh, emerging companies in the United States of America. Um, let me, can I, can I throw one more thing in there then too? Um, I mean, the other thing that, that regulators um, can make judgment calls on and, and, and certainly make a determination as to uh, how they want to pursue that uh, either um, on a couple of different legal fronts, but they absolutely engage in predatory pricing as well. So, I, I, you know, I think that, that you know, what you're going to see is maybe a, a giving uh, giving some of the regulators the tools they need to do just a much better job in monitoring uh, what what is going on out there, and and again, I, you know that that part of it I think is is what many members certainly would assume was going on, and yet you know there was kind of pushback like we don't have the ability, we don't have uh, what we need to get that job done, and and again I think this bill lends itself to to helping in that specific area. As you know, already the Treasury Department um, investigates when there's foreign investment in American companies looking at issues like uh, the intellectual property and whether there's national security implications. This bill would give an additional layer to protection for American consumers and, American, uh, and the American public uh, as it relates to the possibility of intellectual property theft or the issue that Congressman Fitzgerald just mentioned, and that is uh, pricing that it doesn't make economic sense, but rather pricing to undermine maybe uh, the American marketplace to create instability in the American marketplace to create an international competitive advantage. That's not an appropriate, um, not, not an appropriate activity and should be looked at. And this provides tools to the regulators to take a look at that important information. Okay, to, to be clear, um, um, the, the intent of the bill is uh, really motivated by uh, Chinese mercantilism and subsidization of their industrial sector over the last 20 or 30 years. But the bill is written more broadly than that and would apply to other nations as well. Russia is much in the news these days and um, uh, I'm sure it would apply to them, but there are other countries that um, tend to um, subsidize some of their industry uh, we had that longstanding case in the World Trade Organization about uh, Airbus being uh, largely subsidized and competing with Boeing. But Representative Stanton in um, the semiconductor industry, um, the uh, trade association, the Semiconductor Industry Association, has released figures that seem to indicate that other countries, um, such as uh, Korea and Taiwan, offer something approaching um, what could be called subsidies. Um, would this bill um, allow uh, the antitrust authorities to take a look at uh, others besides Chinese companies or, or Russian companies for that matter? And is that um, something you, got, you intend for it to do? Yes. Uh, look, our greatest strength as United States of America is number one, the strength of our democracy, our form of government. And then our second greatest strength is our economy, the strength of the American economy, the greatest economy on planet Earth. There are bad actors out there that would like to undermine both of those things to hurt the United States of America. And it's important that we take steps, um, as we're talking about today, the Foreign Merger Subsidy Disclosure Act, uh, provide tools to regulators to help protect uh, those that may inappropriately use our economic system to try to undermine um, undermine our, our great economy. We don't want that to, to occur yet. So that there is not just China. We obviously, there's a lot of talk about this great economic competition with China, but there are others that would try to do harm to the United States of America. And we wanna give uh, the tools to try to fight, uh, uh, fight back against that. And look, the, the issue of semiconductor, which obviously is front and center, that is a national security uh, issue. So much of 
uh, American technology around the world. So much of our military systems uh, are based on the strength of semiconductors. And if we become overly reliant on uh, manufacturing in other countries subsidized by uh, foreign countries, that could put uh, our economic security, our national security at risk. So this, that's why this is a really important bill and I'm proud to partner with Congressman Fitzgerald on it. Congressman Fitzgerald, one of, one of the possible criticisms of the bill in, in a somewhat larger context is that we have been fighting uh, the Europeans over antitrust policy for a good number of years. They've been very aggressive about going after high technology American companies. Um, by giving our antitrust authorities uh, a little bit more power uh, in a more international context, um, do you think we, um, it will be, uh, especially in, in, in terms of uh, the reaction of our business community, will they um, accuse uh, the authors of this bill or the bill itself of, of needlessly expanding antitrust authority in an attempt to catch up with the Europeans and match the Europeans? Yeah, um, you know, the union, European Union, they're already developing a rule that that would address uh, some of the um, distortive effects, I think is maybe a way of describing it um, by some of the state owned enterprises. So it, it, yeah, we're not operating in a vacuum here. Uh, there probably will be some reaction. Uh, and, and I just go back to there are real world examples of the Chinese government uh, uh, under the idea of uh, some type of capital uh, developed entity, just literally buying US corporations in Silicon Valley. So, I mean, this is a, it, it, it's not theory. It's not like we're looking down the road, trying to gauge what might come at us at some point. I mean, this stuff is, is real and it's happening right now. So yeah, I, I, I'm not saying that there, there you know, couldn't be questions or if, um, like I said, you know, the European uh, kind of uh, fallout from this, I don't, I, that might be too strong a way of describing it, but there, there probably will be a reaction. And I, I think it's something that, that obviously uh, we need to be prepared for. And it is something that, that the US government should be willing to discuss and have communications about. My perception of the pushback is less on the issue that you just brought up, Tom, and more on the issue of concerns that will this chill foreign investment in American companies. We want to be competitive. We want American companies to have access to capital, whether it be from domestic or uh, foreign uh, foreign sources. And of course, if, if you know capital investment funds, um, whether American or foreign, if they're investing for the purpose of making money. Uh, and using the capital markets of the United States to, to, to make money, they're going to be perfectly uh, fine. It's when it's the inappropriate use of uh, the American enterprise system to try to distort it uh, for other purposes, um, uh, to undermine the American company, American economy, or to engage in intellectual, intellectual property theft by acquisition of American companies. That's when they're in trouble. So I don't think there's going to be a significant chilling of foreign investment. We don't want that to occur, but we do have to balance it out with these very real concerns uh, about inappropriate use, inappropriate subsidies for uh, non-capitalistic purposes. Yeah, I would, I mean, that's the purpose of the bill is we want to encourage investment in the US, but we want transparency. We, we don't want anybody to uh, certainly uh, be able to game the system or get an upper hand as a result of uh, you know, taking actions that aren't that aren't obviously transparent uh, to what's going on. And I would argue on the other side, if we don't get a hold of this and do a better uh, a better handle on this problem, there there may be foreign entities that would be less likely to invest in the American uh, system. We we want we want we want a clean system, if you will, and the clean system, a transparent system, is one that's going to garner more investment um, in American companies. Okay, well, I mentioned at the outset <clears throat> that this, uh, your bill is part of a, a larger effort 
um, that was passed by the House last uh, last week. Um, and the Senate has already passed a sort of a, a comprehensive China bill. So do you, th could you take us through um, sort of the inside game of the process that we will see from here and give us your assessment of um, when we might see a final bill, uh, hopefully uh, including your, uh, your amendment. Um, uh, Representative Stanton, your, your party is, uh, more or less in charge of sort of the procedure here. Could you give, take us through um, uh, how this is gonna unfold in the next uh, couple of weeks? Yeah, so the Senate passed their version of the, the, the competition bill, particularly as it relates to China. Um, and obviously the House just passed our version uh, last week. And so guess what? We're gonna do something that we haven't done in a long time on Capitol Hill, a good old fashioned conference committee where two sides are gonna get together Democrats, Republicans, senators, and members of the House, and we're going to hash out a compromise bill. And I know Congressman Fitzgerald and I are both going to advocate greatly. We're going to fight to make sure that this, that our amendment that did get in the, the, the House side stays in the, uh, uh, in the final bill. Timing-wise, uh, obviously, we're going to be advocating that happens as soon as possible. Look, a company like Intel they're making major investments decisions in my district, in the state of Arizona, in Ohio, that they just mentioned their massive investment that they're making in the uh, state of Ohio with a new manufacturing facility. The size and breadth of those investments are directly related to whether or not uh, the United States of America is going to compete uh, on a fair footing. Uh, and that's what the, the Compete Bill does. It does have the CHIPS Act included in it, and it would allow companies like Intel to better compete with foreign uh, competitors, and it's the right thing to do. So we want, we need to get this bill done as quickly as possible. Representative Fitzgerald, um, is your, um, does your district include the, um, um, the area where Foxconn was going to start producing uh, cell phones, but apparently that has, has not, uh, come through yet. Is that in your district or could you speak to the interest of your district and uh, the overall uh, effort to uh, uh, fight back against Chinese mercantilism and rebuild American uh, capabilities, especially in the higher technology industries? Uh, the, the actual site of the Foxconn plant as originally proposed is not in my congressional seat, but uh, as you said earlier, my introduction as majority leader in the Senate uh, was certainly involved in uh, you know that negotiation, and and uh, the state of Wisconsin was very hopeful that ultimately it would result in uh, you know an, an investment that would uh, create about 2,500 jobs. Uh, it, it's been incremental in the way they've been doing this. There's still a plant that is being erected there and there are jobs that have been created. Uh, but I think it's a good example of, uh, you know, looking back and saying, you know, what type of investments uh, are we trying to garner and put in place when it comes to our relationship, not just with China, but, but obviously any, any company that has an international presence and wants to establish something uh, literally in the states uh, because of either, uh, you know, uh, strong workforce, uh, reliable workforce, which is something that I've always been able to sell when it comes to the state of Wisconsin. Now, as, as of late, you know, yeah, it, it's it, there, there certainly are some challenges there, but it, it's, yeah, Foxconn is a great example of a company that, you know, manufactures products that are used by Americans every day of the week and really did not have that manufacturing facility anywhere uh, within the states. And uh, it, it, again, transparency is critical, buy-in is critical, uh, and uh, it, it is a good example of, uh, you know, a company that, uh, you know, developed a relationship with the U.S. government and then ultimately the state of Wisconsin. And, uh, it, you know, we want more of that. We want more of that, absolutely. Tom, let me add in something um, on a related note. In Phoenix, the city that I used to lead as mayor, 
TSMC, the Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturing company, one of the largest on planet Earth, is investing 20, over $20 billion in building a new manufacture, a semiconductor manufacturing facility um, in the city of, uh, of Phoenix. Um, and you know, that, that certainly is a company that's massively subsidized uh, uh, as well. It's a great thing that they're investing in the United States of America. It's a great thing that they're gonna be bringing thousands of jobs to the United States and to my uh, district. And it's something I know Congressman Fitzgerald and I agree on. It's one of the reasons why we need to support Taiwan and we need to support the people of Taiwan and the free market uh, and, the, and, and the democracy uh, in Taiwan because 20 years from now, I still want that to be a Taiwanese company um, for creating jobs, not the People's Republic of China. Uh, and so, you know, there's a direct relationship be between supporting uh, the people, the economic system, and democracy in Taiwan and economic development here in the United States. Um, th this, uh, the Competes Act and the uh, USICA Act on the Senate side, I think was the name of, of their companion bill, um, both have both uh, defensive measures and perhaps your bill um, on uh, disclosure of the subsidies is, is more a defensive measure, but also uh, offensive measures in the sense of rebuilding American uh, technological and manufacturing capacity. We talked about the, the CHIPS Act, but there's also um, in both the Senate and the House bills, um, monies at least authorized for increased research and development, especially in areas of uh, high technology where we're competing with China. Much of that goes to the National Science Foundation, but there are other measures as well. Uh, Representative Fitzgerald mentioned uh, skills training and their apprenticeship measures in the, in the House bill. I presume those made it into the, the final uh, version. Um, how do we balance off the defensive and the offensive sides of uh, meeting the, the China challenge? And do you think there's enough momentum on both sides of the Congress to get a, a really a, a comprehensive bill um, with both defensive and offensive measures through to the final final product. And perhaps you could also comment on the support you're getting from the, uh, uh, from the White House on uh, your bill and on the uh, overall effort for the comprehensive bills. Representative Stanton, you wanna start with that one? Well, I, sh I have not asked Representative Fitzgerald this question, but I assume he is a Packers fan. Uh, and for the Packers to be successful, let's throw a sports analogy in here. Why not? For the Packers to be successful as a team, as they have been for so many years, there is no, you, you can't have a good offense and not a good defense or vice versa. To be a successful team, you have to have both. And are winning this competition that uh, America has with China uh, is going to take both. Uh, and that's why the competes bill has both in there and both elements need to stay uh, in there. So I'm not sure if the CHIPS Act is an offensive or a defensive measure, taking the sports analogy to its logical extreme, I guess you could make uh, either analogy if you want, but we need to keep the, the support for our semiconductor industry in there. We need to keep uh, uh, support for supply chain and better managing our supply. We saw with this terrible COVID pandemic, what happened at the very beginning when we were over-reliant on China for masks, the, the, the manufacturing of masks, and how that hurt American public health? That's a lesson that we have to heed, and we have to bring manufacturing jobs, uh, as, uh, have American policy be to bring as much back to the United States as possible from a national security measure. Uh, we learned that uh, from a public health perspective as well. We learned that during the uh, uh, pandemic. And of course, getting back in the game of investing in basic science, not just through the National Science Foundation or the NIH, but also through our colleges and universities throughout the United States uh, of America. We've let that atrophy way too much. And I think we're learning now that that has hurt us. And then finally, as you mentioned, arguably the number one thing we can do as a national defense measure is to support STEM education, to get more of our young people graduating high school, 
and moving on to our great American colleges and universities and studying the sciences, math, technology, uh, engineering. We've also let that atrophy and that's been to our disadvantage in this uh, growing competitive international marketplace. I don't know if that's offense or defense, uh, but we need both in order to be successful. Congressman Fitzgerald, um, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, certainly, uh, even though I wasn't fully there on the Competes Act, the one provision that certainly I think I support and many of my colleagues on the other on the Republican side of the aisle would say, um, listen, if there's going to be a global infrastructure system funded by the Chinese government, um, we need a, I guess you could say, um, whole of government approach that is uh, certainly all hands on deck. Uh, we need to uh, be very um, aware and careful uh, to make sure that we are uh, united in fighting back. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, like I said, that, that Belt and Road Initiative um, should be a wake up call. It should be really something that we are very concerned about. And, and ultimately, um, you know, we, we need to unite to say, listen, this, this is not acceptable that, that you would have a government uh, with the profile that China does have uh, making massive investments throughout the globe. So I, it, it's, uh, that's, that's also part of, I think, uh, what Congress needs to work on. And there's, you know, after this piece of legislation, there should be others that deals directly with, uh, with something that, quite honestly, I think is, is somewhat troubling. Okay, um, being mindful of uh, your, your uh, um, uh, duty to attend the people's business in the, on the floor of the house, which is uh, starting uh, up some votes fairly soon. Let's wrap this up, but maybe I'll give each of you a chance to make any final comments or comments that on things, aspects of this that we haven't uh, discussed just yet. Um, Representative Stanton, you want to go uh, first? Yeah, first off, uh, thanks for doing the event. That's great. I'm really excited to uh, participate with Tom and the Hudson Institute. And again, uh, Congressman Fitzgerald, my partner on the Judiciary Committee. I look forward to working with him, not just to get this bill across the finish line, but also uh, many future opportunities. Uh, bipartisan, we got to get back to bipartisanship up on Capitol Hill. I'm glad that he and I are partnering up on this particular bill. Look, this theme of international competition and putting the United States in the best position to win this international competition. We can't rest on any laurels uh, in our country. We've got to fight if we're going to win this economic competition. And, and this, this issue with China has really forced us to look in, look in the mirror and say, what can we do better? Uh, what do we need to have to improve uh, in our country in order to win this economic uh, competition? I think as we look back in this time period, that's actually going to be the question of the day. How well did the United States respond to this, this challenge from, uh, from China? So this theme is going to be a big one for, I think, years to come. But this particular uh, bill that uh, Congressman Fitzgerald and I are working on, it's one step, one important step in the right direction uh, that we ensure that this economic competition is done as fairly as uh, possible. And this disclosure required disclosure of information through the merger process. Uh, we'll better arm our regulators to, to help make sure that uh, investment in American companies is done for the pr proper purpose, which is to make money and to and move forward capitalism. That's exactly what we want. Mr. Fitzgerald, any final words? Yeah, thanks again, Tom, for doing this and thank uh, Hudson Institute. I, I would just say, again, not to oversimplify it, but it's basically a modest additional disclosure that um, certainly I think can have a significant impact in uh, not only tracking the money, but, but uh, just uh, creating transparency that's, that's very much needed. Okay, on behalf of the Hudson Institute, let me thank both of you for taking the time to share your thoughts with us and best of luck as the process makes its way through the, uh, through the Congress. Thank you so much, that was great. Thank you, very good.